right. Wait a minute. Okay, let's see. Wait a minute, y'all. <laughs> Amen. God be the glory. Great Amen. things he has done. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. May we bow for our opening prayer. Lord, we do thank you for another day for life, health, and strength. We thank you, O oh Lord, for one another, for the privilege to be able to meet together virtually in this hour and in this space set aside for Bible study. Lord, we pray your blessings of presence with each of us, your spirit leading us into truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Today's topic is regeneration. Some, you may see it listed uh, in certain resources as grace in regeneration, but that's, that's the same as what we have as our topic. Uh, the article of faith reads, we believe that in order to be saved, Sinners must be regenerated or born again. That regeneration consists in giving a holy disposition to the mind that is effected in a manner above our comprehension by the power of the Holy Spirit in connection with divine truth so as to secure our voluntary obedience to the gospel and that its proper evidence appears in the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. I apologize for the typo. I thought I had gotten all of them out, but there were more than I realized. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. We have, I, I listed all of these verses. Uh, I've been trying in past weeks to uh, list enough scripture to give us space to discuss without listing every verse uh, that's found uh, with this article of faith. Um, but I, I couldn't get around this minute this time. Uh, John chapter three, verse three, second Corinthians 5, 17, John one and verse 13, and then first John, First Epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 1, and Matthew chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Our questions for today, again, I, I think we can, everybody can do these in short order. 
what must occur if a person is to see the kingdom of God? And the scripture that that's referring to, take that question is taken from. The second question is taken from the from a, a verse not listed, and I apologize for it not being listed. Philippians chapter two and verse thirteen. According to today's article of faith, is the manner in which regeneration occurs above our comprehension. Who does Philippians chapter two and verse thirteen say is at work with this? Okay, that's a two-part question. The first part of that question comes from that, the article of faith itself. And then the second part of that question comes from that verse in Philippians. And according to Matthew 3, third chapter, verses 3 through 10, what must change? What must change? That's a type, that's another typo. That's supposed to be an eight. Verses 8 through 10, what must change? Okay. We'll take a few minutes with those. What was Philippians? Because I didn't have that written down. That's Philippians, that's, that's Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Okay.
Okay, uh, we're about ready to yes. begin our discussion of the lesson. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, I'll let let's let's review our questions first, and then we'll um, follow up with the uh, rest of the today's study. First question. What must occur if a person is to see the kingdom of God? And this is according to John chapter 3, verse 3. Must be born again. Must be born again. Must be born again. Must be born again. Okay, we okay. Now <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, our, our second question, according to today's article of faith, is the manner in which regeneration occurs above our comprehension? Who wants to respond to that part of number two? I'll take a stab at it. This is Wyrene. Okay. Uh, for me, the way the article is written, it took me several readings to mm -hmm. and some extra effort to try to understand what's being said, but it seems to boil down to the requirement to be first born again, mm -hmm. and then through a changed mind, with the Holy Spirit that results from that, obeying the gospel and showing the fruit of that which would be repentance, faith, and a new life. Okay. All right. Let's, let's, um, let's go to the second line. Okay. Now, if you go over in the second line to the words that it is effected, to the see the where the semicolon is in the second line, right? Yeah, that it is effected in a manner above our comprehension yeah. by the power of the Holy Spirit in connection with divine truth. Let's just take those first two. Um, well, that that part of that that it is effected in a manner above our comprehension. Now, that's, that's, the article of faith is referring to something that it is effected um, in a manner above our comprehension. So, uh, I, I wrestled with the wording of this question uh, a little bit and, um, Perhaps the wording could have been better. The manner in which regeneration occurs is right. the manner above our comprehension. Uh, so that means the work of the Holy Spirit is something we don't understand. Is that what that's saying? That would be, perhaps that is. What, is, what it says is that it is effected in a manner above our comprehension. What we do understand is that the Holy Spirit is that God does it. Yes. Yes. What the article of faith is saying, we don't really know how he does it. We just know he does it. Well, he does it, okay. Right. Uh-huh. He being God or he being the Holy Spirit, or he being both? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, I, I, I'm not trying to be cute when I answer that way. Right. I understand. But the Holy Spirit is God. Yes. 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 Holy Spirit is God. Right. <clears throat> because I had 
it, my 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 understanding is that God worked. Well, my answer, I guess, was that God works in us, but then it also mentions the Holy Spirit too. So mm -hmm. again, that's above my comprehension, you know. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's now what I'm about to say is not doctrine, is not official teaching of the church or anybody that I, I have read or heard or listened to uh, teach. But usually in scripture, when God is referred to as Holy Spirit, there's something beyond mm -hmm. normal human Reasoning. awareness. Yeah, mm -hmm. above yeah. our understanding, yeah. above yeah. our understanding. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. There are testimonies of having seen Jesus. There are testimony of having seen angels. Testimony of even Moses looking at God. But there's no testimony of anybody looking at the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and also, God is always working in us. To make us willing to, to willing and able to obey His own purpose. Amen. 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 A amen. Sister Wigfall, you 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 just summarized this article of faith. <laughs> it is the work of God. It is the work of God. No wonder Nicodemus had a hard time in the at, at night with that night with Jesus in chapter three of John. Okay, let's look at. It. Any, any more comments on that part of our, our question? Okay. Don't let me don't let me rush don't let me rush too fast. Is uh, y'all? Who does Philippians chapter two verse thirteen say is at work with this? Oh God. Big God. Boy, go ahead. Go ahead. I heard some. I heard a voice. God is working. God. Yes, yes. Uh, and this is a little bit out of order, but somebody who has the Bible already turned to Philippians 2, would you read from your translation how 2.13? King reads? James, for okay. it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yeah, he worketh, and the he, of course, is referring to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he worketh in you. He worketh in you to will and. Uh, I read from the uh, that that same scripture from Easy reads reads. Yes, it is God who is working in you. He helps you want to do what pleases Him, yes. and He gives you the power to power. do it. That's it. That's right. That's that's a that's a that's. I like that easy read. Yeah, I like me that. too. I I like that. Yeah, it is God. Uh, long story short, we don't regenerate our own self. Okay. Question number three. Uh, now this one takes perhaps. A, a, some reading as well. It's not a difficult question, I, I don't think, but what must change? It's a different way of asking it than we usually discuss it in Sunday school. This is a familiar passage, John the Baptist, Matthew chapter 3, 8 through 10. This is Linda. I'll take a okay. stab at it as well. Uh, confess one's sins, repent, and produce fruit. Uh, yes, uh, produce uh, from the old translations, fruit of what? Repentance. Anybody got King James? Fruit of repentance. Fruit of repentance. Mm -hmm. Fruit of repentance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fruit of repentance. Okay, let's in, any comments or questions on number three? So, so the change then is basically a change of heart. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a, that's another way of saying it. A change of heart. Our life needs to change. 
lives need to change. That's right. We're also yeah, thinking. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's there's a connection with a change of heart and a change of life. Yeah. Would also the way you think be a part of that? Most definitely. Most definitely. And we, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Is that Sister Boo? Yes. Yeah, Sister Boo, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. You, you're absolutely right. One of the things is very challenging when we evangelize with folk who are not churched people. You don't have to be churched to be born again. But there are different challenges evangelizing folk who are not churched people. And one of them has to do with, one of the challenges has to do, somebody accepts Jesus Christ as their savior And if you say, now you saved, well, you're telling the truth. But the care for you have to, where we try to be careful, and it can be challenging to balance this. Now you're saved, and now you need to make sure your mind and your heart completes the process of being regenerated. Um, because the mind is supposed to change according to scripture. Uh, and we, we'll discuss some of that today. Okay. Uh, do, we, do, do, we, do we have a tendency to, to kind of shortchange that word saved to? Uh, sometimes. Yes, 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 we do. Yes, sometimes, we do. Sometimes we can change one character trait or something like that and got so many others that need to be worked on. That's right. That's it, that's it, we, that's, that, that's, that's, that's true, that's true. Um, and again, think, I, the, yes. the easy, the easy read mm -hmm. says, change your hearts and show by the way you live that you have changed. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's that's John the Baptist talking to the Pharisees. Yeah. yeah. Coming coming to get baptized. Mm -hmm. But we know from Sunday school that Jesus when Jesus saw him he called them what? Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Call them hypocrites, he called them something else too. Vipers. Vipers. What is a viper? Snake. 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 <laughs> When somebody call you a snake, they 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 are not complimenting you. <laughs> they talking about how smart you are when they call you a snake. They call hey. you about what you are low down, <laughs> <laughs> sneaky so and so. <laughs> you snake you, dirty think, snake. Uh, 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 Sister Eve, do you have your message translation? Yes. Uh, I, would you read that that passage from the message? It's, I, I love how bold it, it says <laughs> from Matthew chapter 3, 8 through 10. Oh, uh, 10. I'm starting at 7. When okay, John, good. a lot of Pharisees and Sadducees were, were showing up for baptismal experience because he was becoming the popular thing because it was becoming the popular thing to do he exploded brood of snakes what do you think you're doing slithering down here to the river do you think a little water on your snake skin is going to make a difference uh. it's <laughs> your life that must change not your skin and don't and pull rank by claiming abraham as father being a descendant of Abraham is neither here nor there. Descendant of Abraham or a dime or a dozen. Uh -huh. What a life is it green and blossoming? Because if it's dead wood, it goes on the fire. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, the, the, the message and uh, uh, really captures the emotion and the feelings uh, and the intensity of John's calling out the Pharisees. But not, and, and lifts up uh, the importance of repentance and what repentance is. Uh, I think it was uh, in revival, Reverend Jones, not this year, but in a, a previous year, says repentance is not about being sorry for do doing wrong. It's not repentance unless you change. <laughs> unless you change. Okay. Our article of faith. Now, um, I want to read just a part of it and perhaps uh, <clears throat> You will see where this comes from, or we can point it out, perhaps. Or point out one of the one or two of the places it comes from. Many of these, this, much of this comes from more than one place in Scripture. We believe that in order to be saved, sinners must be regenerated or born again. Notice in the in the language of the article of faith that regenerated and born again is linked together, regenerated or born again. Anybody, anybody uh, know where that comes from in scripture? We talked about it already. Um, is that John 3, 3? John 3, 3. Yes, that's it. That's it. In order to be saved, we believe that in order to be saved, sinners must be regenerated or born again. Now, we could also say we believe that in order to be saved, anybody must be born again. <laughs> because uh, Romans says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, So this 50 cent word regenerated, huh. what's, a, what's a quick way of saying what regenerated means? Renewed. Change. Renewed. Reborn. Change. Reborn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, born again. I think though, the, although renewed and born again, those are good and those are helpful for understanding but I think the reason we keep using the word regenerated is as a connotation with regeneration that sometimes we look over when we say born again. We already talked about it a little bit. Sometimes when people get born again, uh, you can count that as a decision. Um, I think one of the mistakes that the church has made is we started counting decisions and put so much emphasis on who got, who, who, who came to church and joined the church. And we didn't put a, we maybe should have been putting more emphasis on people being regenerated. The two mean the same thing, but regeneration has a connotation with it, with it being process of renewing your mind, that word renewal, renewing your heart, being born again, being made different. That it's not a snap your fingers thing, that God doesn't just send out a bolt of lightning and change you from what you were to what he has you to be. Uh, Anybody remember the old time testimony services? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. You, you remember how the old folk used to say it? Maybe, maybe you said too. Pray for me that I will be 
what the Lord wants me to be. Wants me to be. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, yeah. What that really means that I will become all that God wants me to become. <laughs> That's what that really means. Because it's, it's just like with, with us as children. When we were born, we were infants. We were born, but they were looking at us every day for signs of growth. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. And after a while, they were looking at us to see if we would crawl, <laughs> uh -huh. to see if we would stand up, to see if we would walk, to see if we would talk. And then they were looking at us maybe to see if we would shut up. <laughs> <laughs> signs of growth uh, and it continues not just while we were little but uh -huh. even in our adult life uh -huh. lives uh -huh. you expect to see signs of growth uh -huh. i don't believe anybody in this bible study there is anybody in this bible study today and i have met few people i have met a few i have met a few but ain't none of y'all none of them no <laughs> has not grown since they turned 21 when you get to be my age and if you're the same as you were when you're 21 there's a word as a scriptural word for you and it's not wise person am i not right yeah <laughs> even if you're good <laughs> even if you're a good person you need to grow it's part of regeneration okay uh that's the, the second the second part I want to read there. Let me put the glasses back on. That regeneration consists in giving a holy disposition to the mind. Sister Whitfall, you brought this up. That regeneration consists in giving a holy disposition to the mind. When people are regenerated, it includes a different way of thinking, mm -hmm. a different way of thinking. If we think the same way after being born again that we did before, regeneration needs to continue in us, and it does continue in us. In, any comments or questions on that part of the article? That's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process. Amen. Daily. Yes. Uh, as Sister Hines? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Sister Hines, for that. That is, it's an ongoing process. Now, it's not easy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's, and, and sometimes when... As God grows our minds, we wrestle with God. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We wrestle with God because God starts showing us a different way to do things. Mm -hmm. This is just an example. And sometimes we kind of like the way we were doing it. <laughs> yeah. That's true. We were used to it. We got good at it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Change isn't easy. Change isn't easy. No, it's not. Even when it's necessary. That's right. Amen. Anybody ever learn a different way of getting up out of bed? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I had to when I had surgery, knee surgery, and hip surgery. You have to learn a new way. Have to learn a new way. Have to learn a new way. Okay. Now. We we just the next part I want to read. We we just look before we do that. Uh, this is effected in a manner. I mean that regeneration consists in giving a holy disposition to the mind. This comes from Second Corinthians chapter five and seventeen. Um, If any man or any person, any man or any woman be in Christ, they are what? 
new creature. New creature. New creature. New creature. New creature. Remember that, remember that song? I looked at my hands and my hands look new. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, is it really the hands that look that look different or is the mind different because you see the hands for a different reason? Yeah, the mind. Yeah. It's, it's the, the mind, mind, mind change. Mind change. Looked at my feet and my feet did too. What do you feet have changed? All right. It's the mind that's changed. Uh -huh. uh, there's a old, there's a there's a there's another traditional phrase that used to irk me, Sister Bush. It just got under my skin. What was that? That that boy so grown, he just doing what he everything he's big enough to do. <laughs> doing, doing whatever he wants to do. Right, right. And I thought, and I used to think, what's wrong in doing what you want to do? <laughs> but he had gotten too big for his britches. That's too big for his britches. That's too big for his britches. But, big for his britches. but <laughs> as the mind is changed, mm -hmm. you just don't, not only do you want to do certain things that's maybe not the best thing to do, you want to do the best things to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. You want to help somebody who needs help. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. just want to go out and stay out late at night and spend and spend, spend, spend. You want you want to give, mm -hmm. and you want to do something that's going to make a good difference. And you want to take care of your own self in a responsible way. Okay. It, Okay, now, now let's look at another part of this article of faith. And we talked about this some too already. That it is effected in a manner above our comprehension by the power of the Holy Spirit in connection with divine truth. Brothers and sisters, modern man is in danger of overlooking the mystery of God. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. No matter, talk about being too big for your britches, no matter how much we learn, we need to remember that God's ways mm -hmm. are above mm -hmm. people's ways and that God's thoughts are above people's thoughts. Mm -hmm. God is always in control. God is always in control. Mm -hmm. Human beings, medical doctors, and medical people can take the heart out of one person and put it in another person and that person lives. But human beings cannot cause a person to be born again. We can witness, we can preach, we can be an example, but the work itself is the work of God. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's true. Notice that some of the most sainted, some, now I'm not saying, I'm not even talking about the majority, but I'm sure all of us know people, you may have had friends in school who were the most sincere Christian you ever, as you had, had ever met because of your daily experience with them, yet their parents were certainly going in a different direction. Likewise, on the other hand, don't we all, did not we all know children of Christian parents who were not living in a Christian manner? Yes. Yeah. yes. If it were up to the parents, mm. they would be born again but you can't make anybody be born again. You can make it easy for them to believe the gospel or easier to believe the gospel, but you can't complete the task. That's God. That's God. The old folk, the old folk would say, young lady, young man, I'm praying for you. <laughs> 
All right. But with all of our psychology and ed Christian education and all that we do is still God's work. To That's right. Amen. Still God's work. Regeneration. Okay. Uh, so as to secure our voluntary obedience to the gospel. Even getting born again is still us, up to us to do like the song says, trust and obey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yes. There's no other way. Reverend, <laughs> does that not go back to the free will? It, indeed. Indeed. With all that God does. Right. Because, still have choice. There's, there is still free will. Still mm -hmm. right. There is still free will. Even after you are regenerated and living right, mm -hmm. there is still free will. Even after you start doing good works from a Christian motivation, mm -hmm. there is still free will. Mm -hmm. When you see somebody that needs help, it's still up to you to decide to help them okay. and to what extent mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. Still up to you. It's, there's free will, obedience, obedience, and and that's not necessarily what's that an onerous thing. Mm -hmm. God does not take away discretion, but if we let Him, He allows our discretion to become more and more. Christ-like. Never uh, heard it said that way before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm, I'm trying to go on my memory work. In Philippians chapter 2, before you get to 13, I think it's verse 5 or 6. Let this mind be in you, as was in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. yes. Paul says, let this mind be in you <laughs> as well as in Christ Jesus. In other places in scripture, somewhere else in scripture, uh, the New Testament says, quench not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can have the Holy Ghost just because you got the Holy Ghost and been filled with the Holy Ghost don't mean that you don't have to use your discretion and your voluntary obedience. Okay. Okay. Skipping over a couple of verses here. Um, by the, I, I did not bring my uh, my phone to the table. Uh, what time is it? I know 12, this. Hmm. Twelve forty-one. Twelve forty-one. Okay. You're good on time. Okay. Um, that that last part of the article of faith. Um, and this balances uh, some of these things that um, we need to keep in balance. Some some ideas about this about this and about other things. You need to keep in balance because if you just go with one and let the other one go, you that's not the best. And that its proper evidence appears in the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. This goes back to that passage with John the Baptist in Matthew. <laughs> we already talked about that its proper evidence appears in the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. Uh, in my home church in, in Durham, in Mount, Mount Gilead, the late Dr. Uh, Thor, he was, a, uh, he was a member of our church and he was called to preach uh, later in life, middle age, and his Try, his initial sermon was on evidence, <laughs> or one of his early sermons was on evidence. Uh, I still remember that. That's been over 45 years ago. And that its proper evidence 
appears in the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. Not just faith, <laughs> not just repentance and getting baptized, but the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. Um, we can see that in Matthew chapter three. We can also, the importance of fruits of repentance if you go to Ephesians chapter 5, this is not listed on our sheet, but if you go to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 9, it, that verse includes these words in the King James, the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. The fruit of the spirit is more fully is talked about in Galatians chapter 5 beginning, I think it's verse 22. I, 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 I really, I have, I hope the Articles of Faith study has not been a burden to you all because I have really been enjoying <laughs> uh, it. Under, it I, I hope you see how uh, these articles undergird what we teach and preach uh, and talk about in our Christian education. Uh, and hopefully it will strengthen our biblical connection with these subjects that we talk about being born again and new generation and whatnot. The gospel is a, is a beautiful thing, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, it is. It's a beautiful, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, no, nobody but God could could do this. <laughs> Amen. Nobody but God could do this. Now, um, I didn't. I didn't bring it out of out of out of my office, but I scribbled down a couple of verses that include the word regeneration itself that are found in Scripture. Um, one of them is, in case you want to make a note of this and go back and look it up, we didn't include it in our study sheet, but the word regeneration itself is found in Scripture. One of the places it's found is in Matthew. This is in the King, it's found in the King James. New Revised uses the word renewal. And the word renewal is found in many places throughout the New Testament. And the idea itself is an Old Testament idea as well, especially in the prophets. Uh, Matthew 19 and verse 28. I believe it's Titus. Oh boy. Okay, I'll have to go back and, and look at the Titus passage. <laughs> um, and there are two verses in Ezekiel. I'm pulling from memory here, so forgive my, forgive my clumsiness. Verse chapter 36, Ezekiel chapter 36. Let's 
This is where he says, I will take out of you your heart of stone, I believe, and replace it with a heart Verse 26 and 27, a new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. That's an Old Testament pre-shadowing of the New Testament idea of being born again, a change of regeneration. Reverend Pettiford, I think. Change. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, I think Titus is chapter three, verses five and six. Okay. Titus three, five, and six. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was too busy looking to see. That's okay. <laughs> Y'all keep on living. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's that is it. Not because of any works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy through the water of rebirth and renewal. One of the things I observed when I was serving as a prison and jail chaplain was that uh, sometimes you would be, you, you find uh, certain people who are in prison who seem to be so receptive of listening to scripture and what it means and uh, accepting the Lord that you start working with them and spending a lot of time talking with them. And then a guy or a woman walks up or, or calls, calls out to you and says, chaplain, I got saved last night. <laughs> you got saved? How, how did it happen? Well, the Lord came to me and I accepted him as my savior. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow. I spent all these, all these, all this much time talking with so and so around the corner, and we're still talking. And I walk around the corner, and the Lord just showed up and saved you. <laughs> but it's what it did for me is it fixed in my mind that this is of God. This is of God. You, we can. Do all that the Lord leads us to do, but it's not completely in our hands. Uh, it's not uh, in our hands. You can't, uh, you can't decide who's going to get saved today. That's right. And you can't decide that I'm going to get so-and-so saved. Well, you can be determined and not give up until that happens. But in the process, uh, if it, when it happens, you might very well be able to see that God did it. God did it. You cooperated, but God did it. God did it. If that were not true, there would be no devils in the church. Would uh -huh. there? Would there? Uh -huh. No. <laughs> and does the devil ever get in the church? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, he does. Yes, he does. Or she does. And sometimes, and some, and sometimes the Holy Ghost gets into dens of iniquity. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, a lot of times it beats you there. It beats you there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. All right. In, any comments or questions as we... Reverend Pettiford, I was trying to get a handle on this word regeneration. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gave several definitions, but one of them... Where did, where did you go? 
excuse me. Uh, I was online. Okay, okay. And one of the definitions biologically, it said it's an organism that regrows a lost part mm -hmm. so that the original function is restored. Mm. And, and then I looked at, it said in the spiritual realm, God brings an individual from a condition of spiritual defeat and death to a condition of holiness and life. And I thought it's a process of being restored to what we are were originally intended to be. I, I concur. I concur. I concur. Now, uh, if the only response, the, the response I want to make uh, to what you just said, Sister Doris, uh -huh. uh, has probably little to do with uh, your experience. But I like the word regeneration because regeneration fits everybody, the people who lived an awful life before accepting Jesus Christ and the folk who've been good their whole lives. Everybody that's lived has not lived a scandalous life. Sometimes we have put we have tried to make the point too hard of, that Paul makes with a simple statement, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Ain't no need, ain't no need of somebody feeling guilty at my age because they sneaked and got a cookie when they were a child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. or, or, or told a fear of trying to uh, miss getting, so trying to duck being punished as, a, as growing up or something. We are, God brings us to what he wants us to be. We don't do it ourselves. It's that process of growth. It's a 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 process of growth. Innocence, in when even the person, be they young or old, who has lived a completely innocent, in innocent surroundings, has to grow in order to understand what the Lord Jesus was talking about, be wise as a serpent. Wisdom is not, is, includes goodness but it's not just innocence. Character includes doing right, but it's not just having, having always avoided any observation or experience of trouble. Regeneration includes more than just not drinking, not smoking, not doing drugs, or whatever a person's list of sins is. Okay, I didn't, I'm sorry for getting off on that. Any, any other comments before? Sure. Yes, Barbara, did I see your line? No. Okay. Uh, no. Devin Patterson. Yes. This is, this is Janet Wall. I, you all may have spoken of it before I got online, but I was going to ask for prayer for Alma P. Thank you. Thank you. Because she, she should be in surgery as we speak. Yes. Um, oh. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And also, how is Sylvia Conrad? 
her condition has not, at my last hearing, had not has not improved. Uh, and uh, I, that's her care condition has had not improved at at my last conversation. I did uh, I did not go yesterday. Yes, Sister Graham. Oh no, I was just thinking about um, Sylvia and Al. I've been knowing Sylvia for over 40 years. Yeah. yeah. We could also remember Josephine McGriff. Absolutely. And Reverend, yes. And, and Reverend Jenkins. Absolutely. And, and can we include Reverend Bowie as well? Oh, yeah. In, in our prayers. Oh, yes. Uh, Dick, would you lead us in our closing prayer? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for this another day and another opportunity that you granted us to come calling your holy and righteous name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for working each of us up this morning at different times and starting us on the way. And we thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to another noonday session of Bible study. Thank you, dear God, for Reverend Peter Ford and his leadership in the church articles of faith. Thank you for the knowledge and wisdom that he's given to us. And Heavenly Father, we come and with saddened hearts or heavy hearts because in our congregation, we have so many members, dear God, who's sick. And Heavenly Father, we just ask you to touch each of those. Miss mm -hmm. Conrad, Miss McGriff, Reverend Boyd, Miss P. Heavenly Father, just ask you that you would touch each of those persons because we know them by names mm -hmm. in a special way. Mm -hmm. If it's your will, dear God, we're just asking you to heal their bodies, dear God, in your way because we know you know everything that they need because you made us. Dear Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, just not those persons in our congregation, but all persons, dear God, who's suffering one issue or another. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon the bereaved families, dear God, Miss Daniel's family, the Green family, and Miss uh, Ferguson, Carolyn Mills, dear God, mm -hmm. bless her family in a special way. There are others, dear God, that we may not know. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask that you have a particular blessing upon this nation. Dear God, we've gone through so much, but dear God, and only you can straighten it out. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for our entire congregation. And Heavenly Father, just ask that your blessing be upon all of us throughout the further part of this day. These are not the blessings we ask in your son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Everyone stay safe. Thank Amen. you. You too. Bye. Have a blessed day. See y'all tonight. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.